Welcome to another spring vlog. This time we are at the Adian Lake. Look at this, beautiful this place. If you remember this from my vlogs last spring, it really is a special place. So we take the, we sort of left the park lake alone for this week, for this session, probably a couple of sessions actually. So I forgot to start using my spring ticket on here and I was looking forward to getting back somewhere different. So what have we got in store for this week? Apart from 48 hours on here, we have got biscuit of the week. We've got a total change of tactics using the multi-rig and I'm going to be showing you before and after of how to mature and pimp up your boilies using liquids and powders that I find works really well this time of year. So without further ado, roll that intro. First time you've come across my channel, you like this type of videos and you want to see more of this type of videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit that bell notification icon, and you'll never miss another video or live stream again. Just got all the gear around. Look at it, it's bloody absolutely everywhere. It's a totally different set of gear, well not totally different set of gear, but different because you can't use leaders and all different types of things. So we're going to be using all you know inline sort of stuff and no leaders and oh, there's lots lots going on in this vlog basically because it's a total different tactics to the ones I've been using the park lake. Chose this swim, you've got loads of shallows here, you've got bars going out, you've got an island there, you've got lots going on. And there's only been one fish out so far this spring. A lovely 36 or 37 common I think, but at least there's been one out. Whereas most lakes have been kicking off and everything's been out. Here, a little bit different. It's a little bit, it's got its own sort of ecosystem. It's not only because You've got the alien fish in here, but it is an alien lake as well. It really is. That's why I call it the alien lake. So hopefully the sun's going to come out in the next couple of days. A couple of hours before dark. It's feeling a little bit warmer. I've got my t-shirt on. And there's nice shallows to the right, which I've had some nice fish out of last spring. If you remember, a lovely, fully scaled mirror. Absolutely to die for. Absolute peach. One of the best looking fish I've ever caught. And we've had some nice other mirrors and commons and other things out of here over the years in the summer and the spring. So I'm going to get sorted. We're going to cover loads about how I approach it, what I'm doing over the next couple of days. I'm going to show you about how to pimp up and mature your, mature your boilies with the, with the use of liquids like the liquid liver hydroslate, liver powder, green lip muscle. Like I promised in the last vlog, I'm going to actually show you before and after on the bank what it does and why it works for me and may work for you as well. Also got biscuit of the week and loads of other stuff going on, which we're going to talk you through throughout the 48 hours. So I'm going to get sorted, get it all up, because we've only got a couple of hours before dark. Then I'll get back to you, catch you soon. Right, welcome back. We've finally got everything sorted. Now Broly's up, all the kits laid out, all done. I managed to tie some new rigs, cut off me leaders and everything. Cut them with leaders off totally. Tubing, um, lick clip, three, three and a half ounce lids, I suppose. Old multi rigs. You know, really do like the multi rigs. Can't emphasize how good a rig they are. But I hear some of you saying, well, why not the hinge stiffy that you've been using down at the Park Lake? Well, there's a good reason for that. Park Lake's got no weed in it at the moment. This lake, can get really really weedy and it's up and down like a bloody egg box as well so I want to put a fisher pop up for a start but I also don't want to fish a boom section like on the hinge stiffy which is stiffish stiffer so I like to use a coated braid PB products one or Christon's very good Christon snake bite you know any of those Christon uh, all, uh, all links coated all links are really really good you know, I've been around for years and they're still going strong and still good. So is the PB products, one the Jelly Wire, that's good, £25, like that. But so I want it to sort of, you know, I don't want it stiff, I want it to to go over any contours or any weed or anything like that. I want it to go over it. And where I'm fishing the back of bits of bars and gravel, I don't know exactly where I'm landing. Of course I can feel it when it goes down, but I want to have, I want the opening to not be stiff. I want it to be semi-stiff so it just lays over anything. So hence I'm using a multi-rig instead of the hinge stiffy. Little white 
Fleur pop up on two and a Monster X pop up that I've pimped up on the other one which I'll show you tomorrow. Not going to put any bait out for the first night. Uh, I bought some I bought some bait with me obviously because I'm going to show you how I mature it up and glug it up and put the liquids and ingredients with it, powders, tomorrow. First night I just want to get them out there. It was a bit of a mission in between the rain, it's bloody been raining here, stopping raining, look, sun, sun's lovely now, but it was pouring down earlier on, then stop in, shower, so I had to get it all done before it got dark. It's gonna, sun's going down over there, but it won't be long before it's black, and it does get pitch black over here. Here's the rods, they're on the dance floor, I've got them on single sticks. Reason why I've got them single sticks is because I've got one over near the reeds over there, on the little gravel lump. Another one out about 60 yards out there, the back of a big bar. I mean, all the way out there, there's bars going out there like crazy, plateaus, really shallow. But I'm, I'm fishing off the back of it in the deeper water there. And the left hand rod is out towards the tip of that island, about 60, 70 yards on the back of a bar again, where I've had bites from before. Remember, I caught that um, nice common last year off of the back of that bar last spring so and of course a lovely mirror off there before on the, one of the summers gone past so I know it produces that spot and this spot here down here I'm hoping this is mega shallow here where the, where the, uh, the black chicken is it's mega shallow it's about two or three foot deep slopes down I'm hoping tomorrow when we get a bit of sun as the forecast whether it comes true or not the fish are going to start to get up here. So there's only been one fish out, but the fish have been seen showing out in the middle of the lake. So we're going to watch, look, listen, see where we see them. We may move tomorrow. If we see them up the other end of the lake or in the middle of the lake, I should be moving tomorrow to get on them. That's for certain. So yeah, that's that's the reason I've got single sticks because I'm rods all pointing in different. I'm really covering the whole swim. Water temperature. It's saying 13.9, 14 degrees. So that's a good sign as well, because this is normally a couple of degrees colder than everywhere else in the country. That's why I call it the Alien Lake, because it is the Alien Lake. It's an absolute mad place, but a wonderful place as well. So that's where we're at, that's what's happening. I've had my first cup of tea, enjoyed. It's always nice to have that first cup of tea when you sit down, the rods are out, you're sorted, take a breath. It's nice to have it all done and dusted, and it? Have that first cup of tea. No biscuits yet, so I'm waiting till tomorrow. So I'll show you a biscuit in a week. So good guys, look, as always, put down your comments the biscuits you like, the biscuits you want me to try. Put them down in the comments and we'll be going through loads of different biscuits. You might have noticed the old pork chop is not here this week. Reason being, on here there's a rule where you can't take the fluffy creatures with you. So unfortunately he has to stay indoors for a couple of days with Mrs B. And um, yeah, enjoy him being pampered and not out in, in the undergrowth and everything. He gets treated like a king at home. He'd be having my steak. I go home, I'll look in the freezer and I'll go, oh, well, I thought I was going to have steak tonight. Ah, well, yeah, it's a problem here. We haven't got none. I haven't been in the shop here, yeah, but there was a bit there when I left. You know who's had that, didn't you? Paul Chop himself. Yeah, he's crawling at the freezer, scrunching up at it. He wants a steak. She gives in to him. It's like a little baby to him. He's, uh, he lives a life of Riley, but I'm not there, that's for certain. So that's for a wrap. I'm going to get the kettle back on again. I may even have a biscuit or two. So I've got a rather couple of nice ones to show you, or one particular packet that I've bought, a couple, two or three different ones. I thought I'd have a look at, if not this session, next session. But yeah, I think you're going to like this one. I haven't had them before. It's one that you guys, one of you, that have uh, recommended it. So. I shall be partaking in a biscuit of the week tomorrow. And we're going to show you how to do your baits, mature your baits, and we'll have a look at the multi rig as well when I reel them in to have a walk around or move, have a recast. So, first night on the Alien Lake, spring fishing. I hope you enjoy it, guys. I will catch you in the morning. back 
Good morning, should I say. Well, the rods have remained motionless all night. I've been up since early o'clock, not seen a thing. The lake looks really dead, even though it looks really beautiful and nice. And there's loads of birds moving about, and there's lots going on, and things are flying around, and it's very spring-like. It's, when the sun comes out, it's nice, but it, it's got a bit of a cold chill to it, that wind. I can feel it on the back of my neck. I, mean, I wouldn't want to be right down there, although the fish could be down there, it just seems that that would be the cold windward bank. So I think what might be the plan, I think, for me last night is that I'm going to reel in a minute, I'm going to go for a good walk around, speak to some of the other guys, see if they've heard or seen anything. And look, see, the sun's coming out now. It's nice in the sun. If I go and stand up there, it's beautiful, it's lovely. As soon as I come in a bit of shade or something, that wind at the back of my neck, it's pretty cold. I've even been up the tree up there, which is a good vantage point. I had a look out in the shallows to the right, over there across my shoulder, but nothing's ventured in or anything like that. So, not really too sure where they are. So, I'm going to reel in, have a walk around, have a rethink, maybe a move, don't know yet. But when I come back, I'm going to show you how I mature my boilies and hook baits. How I glug them up with liquids and powders and stuff like that to give them that boost, to give them that attraction. But this time of year in the spring, fish are moving about looking for an easy meal. And if you can attract them down on your bait, you've got half a chance of catching one. It could be a really good time of year. And I've always found using the old liver liquids and powders and green lip muscle and you know bellican, liquid bellican and shavings of bellican, all that sort of stuff really can convert a fish just moving about, minding its own business, just waking up after a cold winter into a fish on the bank. Right, I'm gonna get cracking, I'm gonna reel in and I'm gonna go for a walk and see what I can see. Have a good look round. See a couple of fish where my mate's fishing in the corner, in the shallows zoom in about, only small ones but any bite is good at this time I thought well if they're there maybe they're moved in the shallows yeah I'll show you down here look moved in the shallows down here so I've got up the tree up there had a good look and I see one swimming around you know just zooming around mind its own business looked like I was looking for an easy meal so I banged all three rods changed over the leads to little one ounce leads kept the same baits on I had on for last night and just banged them at 20 yards all the way along there's a bar out there that runs all the way along there banged them on the top of the shallow bar and in the sort of muddy area out there as well where I see the fish sort of moving around so put them out there slacken the lines right off and you never know you never know. I've been back up the tree since, can't see any fish in there, but if that current bun comes out a bit more, we may be in with a chance. Then what I do is before dark, I'll reposition them out on my spots out in the lake a bit further. Right, so I was gonna talk about how I mature my boilies, how I pimp them up, you know, with the aid of liquids and powders. It's a really, any time of year, and you can use lots of different oils or liquids or ingredients or powders, you know, whatever you like. But these ones particularly for this time of year in spring are the ones I use. I like liquid liver. It's the poultry one you've got to get. Now there's a few different ones out there. There's a meat one and that. I've always found that the poultry one, the chicken one, is the best one. You can normally tell, I, I can tell by smelling it. You won't know just by the label. So I can only recommend the ones that I use, which I know are good. <clears throat> also, liquid bellican. An absolute another wonderful addition in powder form. In You get blocks of it, which you can, like a paste, which you can get off and wrap around your boilies or put in your stick mixes, or you know, and this is in liquid form. Really high smelling. I think what it is in like Indonesia or Thailand and that, they just, mush lots and lots of different fish together <clears throat> and produces this like shrimp uh, it's like a shrimp pasty thing so there's that liquid as well let me just change this 
ISO here because that sun's come out and it's getting a bit too bright for the camera. That's better. You can see me a bit better now without blurring out, whiting out everything. As for powders, there's loads out there you can use at different times of year. Hot chilli powder, garlic powder. But the two I particularly like in the spring and the winter is the hydrolyzed liver powder and the green lip muscle powder. Again, there's a few different powders out there. These are the poultry one for the liver and the green lip muscle one is from New Zealand, highest quality. Loads of minerals, loads of amino acids, just lots of really good stuff that the fish need in their diet and which they actively sort out in their natural food as well. So there's those. I mean, you can use it as it gets warmer. I'll be adding things like the beta stim. I'll be adding things which is a betaine. I'll be adding things like tuna oil or salmon oil, which gives a nice little slick. As soon as that water temperature gets even higher, Normally after they've spawned, I tend to put the, the real proper rolls in, like the salmon oil and the tuna roll, into me stick mixes or into my boilies to mature them and glug them up and get them all sexed up. But today, what I'm going to show you is how I do before and after of my sort of spring mix of ingredients and liquids. Right, so down here I've got a before and after. Now, if you're using freezer, you can use it on shelf life, but it works better on freezer baits. Get your freezer bait out of the freezer, leave it for about half an hour to an hour to slightly defrost. So you get a bit of liquid in there. Now, obviously, these have been out since yesterday when I took them out of the freezer to come here. But ideally, you want them just about half an hour to an hour after they come out of the freezer. So you've still got that little bit of water. Get yourself a couple of decent, a little box of decent bags. I've got mine off eBay. If I can find them again, I'll put a link in the description. I'll put a link for all this, the, all the ingredients, all, all the liquids, all the powders. I'll put links down below in the description so you can check them out at your leisure. Right, let's have a look down here. Okay, you've got your normal out of the freezer baits and you've got your matured, cured baits, which I have done already. Yeah, let me just put the camera around so you can have a look. That's the before. And that's the after. Okay, so you can see I've got some proper polythene bags there off the internet. You can see the before and you can see the after. How all those ingredients and liquids have soaked into the boilies, making them highly attractive. They'd be working out in the lake for a long period of time, giving off all them food signals. So how do we go about it? Right, first of all, this is the first liquid. The liver liquid, sorry, the liquid liver hydroslate. So what does hydroslate mean? Well, it's basically, layman's terms is, all the goodness is kept in it when they've produced this liquid from the actual liver in the chicken, in the poultry. So we pour, probably, depending on how much bait you've got, I just generally go with a with a pouring like that. Look, I tend not to put too much in the start. Probably 50 mil, something like that. So all I want to do is coat the boilies and let them suck in that lovely juice. You know. Second liquid that I put in is a much finer liquid. The liver is quite thick. Is a finer liquid. This is the Belican, liquid Belican, which if you smell it, you're like, oh my God, that's that's just wrong. It really is strong smelling, fishy, shrimpy, pasty, rotten sort of fish smell. But believe me, it is an absolute superb addition to anything. You can use it on anything. I'm using it to coat my boilies. Right, so we put in, again, 50 to 100 mils, up to you. There is no limit or minimum. But what I will say is, you don't want to saturate the baits, you want to put a coating on them so they suck it in. Right, so we put some of that in there. Now I know quite a few guys who do this, now they put the powders in, I don't. What I want to do is I want to coat the boilies first with those liquids and let them suck it in. So what I do is I get the bag, and I'll give it a bloody good shake. And then 
I leave it for about an hour to soak in. Do the bag up, because it keeps all the moisture in there, especially if you've got a sunny day like it is today now. Keeps that moisture in there, and it gives those, while they're still half frozen, they will suck in all that liquid. So I'm gonna do that, we're gonna leave those for about an hour, then we're gonna come back and we're gonna add the powder. Right, okay, we've done that, we've left them for an hour, we'll give them a good bloody shake up, let it suck it in, we've opened the bag back up, and it's taken on a fair amount of that liquid, but we've still got some round the edges, which is what we want, because when we add the powders to it, it's gonna to stick to that excess, li excess liquid, and then make it proper matured, proper sexy, and stick to those baits. And when you put them out, or you mesh them up and use them as hook baits, because that's what you can do as well, or just use them as hook baits, they'd be working, giving out all that attraction. And uh, believe me, honestly, this time of year, it really has made a difference to my catch results over the years. So, right, let's add the powders now. Now, doesn't matter which one you add first, but don't go overboard. This one, this is the liver, liver powder. We put, I would say, a good helping of that. Let's have a look, let's put some of that in. We don't put a massive amount, but a good helping. Right, next powder is a greenlit mussel. Here we go. The greenlit mussel from New Zealand. Proper good attractor. So we put in, again, about the same as we did with the liver powder, we put in about the same amount with the greenlit mussel. Again, as we did when we put the liquids in, seal the bag up and we give it a bloody good shake. Real good shake, mixing all those ingredients into those boilies and that liquid so it sticks to it. What you'll find is it'll stick to those boilies. Those powders will infuse themselves into the liquids, the excess liquid, the excess liquid even, which is on the boilies and it infuses it into it. So I'm gonna give it a bloody good shake, then I'll leave it for an hour. And then what should happen is we should get, as you see earlier, the after, which I'll show you in a minute. Well, I'll give that a good shake up. If you look at it now, it looks very bitty and there's still some liquid around here. It hasn't matured yet properly, so we've got to leave that for a couple of hours now to have a look. And this is what they should look like when we finish. Look at those bad boys, look. Look at those. Look absolutely full of all that liver and attraction, all those liquids all stuck on there. Look, it's, all like, it's, like, a, it's like we put a bit of paste on there and wrapped it round. And that sucks right into the boilies, giving you all that attraction. So I'm gonna put you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this now for a couple of hours, and now over time it sucks it all in and makes it really, really sexy. So, that works really well. You can mesh those up, you can fire them out of a catapult. They work in a throwing stick as well. Let me just change this because it's, it is rather sunny. Look, the current bun's up there and it's making, it's blowing out the whole video. Right, so that's what we do. That's one, one way I enhance my boilies, I mature them, I glug them up, put those lovely liquids and powders in there, and it's a real good edge. All times of year, because you use any liquids and any powders you like, but that's what I use, I use those ones. Those ones I recommend, so I know they come from a good source, and I know they are the best ones you can get for the money out there. You can use, like I said in the summer, put a bit of tuna oil in there, add some hot chilli powder. You know, it's up to you. If you've got a favourite ingredient or a favourite oil or liquid, you can use hemp oil, you know, bit better stim in the winter. Uh, you know, it really is up to you to make your own concoction. It's what you feel confident in. What you know has worked, worked for you before, get it all in there, suck it in those boilies. We're trying to create little bits of paste and the liquid to suck into those boilies. Works best, as I say, if you take the freezer baits out for half an hour to an hour, then put your liquids in, leave for a couple of hours, an hour, then put your powders in. Shake it all up, get it all mixed in there together and leave for another couple of hours minimum. What that would do is, depending on what liquids you use, that'll, that'll give it a bit more of a shelf life as well. It prolongs the breakdown period. And honestly to God, I wouldn't say it, but it's one of my best tips, is to mature up your baits like that. So I thought I'd share that with you. There is a, another video that I've done. I put a little link up there, going into it more, a little bit, not more detail, but a few other liquids in there and bits and pieces. If you want to watch that, I'll put the link up there. That might give you some more information as well. So what's happening? Well, I've banged them three out there. 
Same bait side on last night, changed the lids over one ounce ones, and we're going to see what happens going into our final night. Just before dark, if nothing happens or, or the fish disappears, they tend to go off the shadows. As the sun goes down, they tend to go off the shadows, going further out in the lake, and I'll reposition them in the slightly deeper areas in between the bars. Right, <sighs> sun's giving us glimpses and everything else. I do miss the old carp dog though. I do miss him running around like a lunatic and eating everything. <laughs> but it's, uh, you know, unfortunately the rules dictate that we can't bring dogs on there. Ah, oh, something I'm going to do, I'm going to show you, is Biscuit of the Week. I know you've been waiting for it. I know it's the highlight of the vlog for you, is Biscuit of the Week. Well, I'm going to jump in the bivvy and get out the biscuit, because I haven't even tried one yet, so we're going to try it together. Just wait one second, I can't get it. Right. Right, I've got them. Now these were recommended to me by someone off the live stream, uh, and which they say is their most favourite biscuit. This is Fox's Viennese Milk Chocolate, lovingly baked since 1853. Check them bad boys out. Look at those, they look absolutely lovely, don't they? So we're going to try one of those. If I can open them up, let's have a look. Let's have a little look at Look at them. You get loads in there, and oh, look, there's loads in there. The carp dog would be absolutely envious now. He would be jumping up like a lunatic. At least I'm going to get them all to myself for a change. Right, let's have a look. Well, look, they've got like a biscuity out in, outer, both sides, and you've got a chocolatey inner. Let's have a try. Mmm. Hey, what? They are pretty damn good. I think they need a cup of tea, though. They need you need a cup of tea with these, hundred percent. Mmm. No, what? They ain't gonna last long, I tell you. Look at them bad boys. Look, nice bit of chocolatey bit in the middle, and a lovely out of biscuit coating. So. Thumbs up for them ones. Thank you. Sorry, I've forgotten your name. I recommended these ones. Fox's Viennese milk chocolate. And they were one pound. They were a pound. A pound in the spa. One pound. That's all they were. So not a budget biscuit as well. So, hmm. Oh. I'll give them a four star rating. Got to be exceptional to be a five star rating. Plus pork chop ain't here to try one to let me know how good it is either. So four start with them, but we're going to need a cup of tea with them, so, so I don't need the bloody lot. I'm going to stop filming, get the kettle on, and have a couple with a cup of tea, and I'll see well, you soon. I've been persevering today with those three rods over there on the shallows. Didn't catch anything, and didn't see any more fish after I see that one from up the tree. But you've got to give it a go, haven't you? You've got to give it a go. If you see a fish mooching around, like it's feeding, you've got to put a bait on it, or three baits in this case. So, sun's just going down, about, where is it? It's about half an hour before dark o'clock. So I've just redone the rods, just done all three, got them out for the night. I've got one right over there, in a shallow bit of water up against the reeds, which is a good spot usually. And I've got two out towards the left of that island there but well back, because that's not my water. About 80 yards, well, no, about 60, between 60 and 70 yards, just on the back of a bar in about five foot of water, I reckon. Two white Fluoro System X pop-ups and one doctored Monster X pop-up. So, and what I mean by doctored is I've given it the same treatment like I did earlier on with the, uh, Lugging the base and maturing the base, I've done the same with the hook bait, but made it a bit thicker the paste around it. And then I rolled it up, put a little bit of the ingredients around it, a bit of the powders around it, left it for about a week, and then I've meshed it up so it's a little harder than just having a few bits on it. It's giving it a wrap of paste, I like to call it. Then I've meshed it up, laid these tights, blobbed it off, used a screw, a uh, bait screw, on the same multi-rig, I've got multi-rigs on three, so I've put one of those out there, because I did quite well on that last spring. 
but I still think we're behind a little bit with the spring because everything's not really looking spring-like to me, not on this lake anyway. The Alien Lake is the Alien Lake. It's has its own little mini climate and everything else. So I thought I'll stick with the two fluoros, go with the one liver, liver powder, greenlit mussel, and the Belican and the Belican liquid and the liquid liver hydroslate. That's what paste, that's the wrap around it. So, you know, pretty confident with that. So that's where we're at. I have seen, I think I've seen, I'm not 100% sure. I think, I didn't actually see the fish, but I see the water disturbance. There's too much water disturbance to be a duck. Past, well past the, um, about 20, 30 yards past the end of the island, about, 60 yards further on to where my rods are in someone else's swim so they're about and they're moving seeing that one today zooming around it was seeing that one come out twice i think i think i'm not 100 sure you know i know it's only done one bite so far but it's got to start doing bites and you've got to be here and you've got to be in it to win it haven't you so going into our last night i feel confident all three rods went down lovely Still got tomorrow morning, if that sun comes up, the shallows, we could have a little go before we go home. But apart from that, we're sitting back and enjoying the alien lakes. It is such a beautiful lake, look. Really is, look at that out there, look. That really is such a beautiful lake. Stunning lake, stunning alien fish in it. With a, a mad climate. Everywhere else is probably about 20 degrees today. Here, it's about 13 today. But it's nice in the sun if you walk up there where the sun is earlier on it's beautiful out here with that cold feels cold on the back of my neck so all to play for we just need a bloody bite now don't we we just need a bite that's what we need we need to catch one well so does everyone else on the lake there's only been one fish out and that was about a week and a half ago so they're about they're showing they have been showing during the week they're scooting around won't be long before someone has one and then someone else will have one and then someone else will have one and they would have woken up 100% fully. As I'm speaking to you, there's gnats buzzing around everywhere and last night I had mosquitoes. Look, I, you see, I, I doubt if you can see the, the old gnats and that with this camera, it's not sharp, it's not sharp enough. Uh, the lens isn't good enough to see the things without going right in on it. But there's gnats about, I got bitten by a bloody mosquito last night on my hand. So, you know, everything's waking up. The fish has just got to make an appearance now. I haven't put any bait on. So tell a lie, tell a lie. I did put some bait out there. I put out some of the, those matured boilies out there today. So I'm going to put some more out when it gets dark because of the black chickens. I've got my tufty torch, which is working absolutely mustard, that is. I just had to look. You can see how bright that is out there, right? I just had tufties come along that back bit there. That's about 80, 90 yards. And it's bright sunshine. Tufty torch out. Bang. Mate, they were gone. They were, see you later. Off me spot. Because you know you're going to get a bleep off one. First thing in the morning, I'm going to get a bleep off a tufty or a bloody black chicken. That's for certain. So all to play for. It's good to be back, even though we haven't caught yet. It's good to be back at the Alien Lake and uh, it's good to actually see one skimming around today. Even though me or no one else has caught one yet. But we still got another night and a couple of hours in the morning anyway. So I'm gonna relax as usual. I'm gonna get that kettle on, drink myself stupid with cups of tea all night and sit up and try and listen. Because when I come back in the next couple of weeks, uh, I mean, it could have all changed then, but it's good to build up a picture over your spring or, your, or over a few sessions of where they were, where they could be, certain conditions, so you've got an idea of where to look the next time you're down. Right, on that note, I'm going to get the uh, dinner on. Mrs B's steak and cooked vegetables. Happy days. Which I'm going to have all to myself, because look, no pork chop to eat it. Cup of tea on the go, radio on, football's on tonight. Watch, listen, enjoy the Alien Lake.
about 5am, got an hour before first light. Always like to get up, look at that sky. Always like to get up about an hour before the whole world wakes up. Because you can hear fish crashing or showing or, especially in the spring, they really do show this time of year, first thing in the morning or even an hour before first light, you can get a good idea of where they are. I mean, look at it out there. Best time of the day, isn't it? Best time of the day, first thing in the morning. So we had a single bleep about an hour ago on the middle rod, so that might mean there's something moving about. But, um, yeah, so I'm up. Gonna get the kettle on, get my jacket on, because this time of year, it can be bloody cold in the mornings as well until that sun gets over the hill, you know? So I'm going to get the kettle on, I'm going to watch, listen even though we've got to go in a good few hours it's, it's a, you never know, you never know this could be a really good time, we might have a bite it just, it's good to be prepared and see where they are anyway so let's watch the sunrise unfold catch you soon those rods to go off. This is our last 10-15 minutes before we got to pack up. Say goodbye at the first trip on the Alien Lake but I'll be back next week I think or the week after. Seen lots of fish but they're all up the other end. If I was staying or I could have stayed I definitely would have moved up the other end. This sun that we're meant to have hasn't materialised hence why the fish haven't gone into the shallows. But we just have to keep on keeping on, as they say. Still got 10, 15 minutes before I've got a reel in. Just starting to pack up the kit. Slow pack up. But we'll be back. Maybe next week we'll be at the Park Lake. Or maybe we might come here. Or maybe somewhere else. But I'm glad you've enjoyed this vlog. The first one at the Alien Lake. Plenty more to come from here. Because I know you guys really like it. If you like this type of videos and you want to see more of these type of videos and live streams, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit that bell notification icon and you'll never miss another video again. See you for the next vlog.